John McKegg with Jesus Christ Trust Hudnet. And I uh, had someone in the comments make a great suggestion. And thank you for this suggestion. Keep suggestions coming, please, of what might be a good topic for a video. Some, some spiritual question you had. And someone kindly, you know, was like, hey, can you do a video on cannabis? And I was like, yes. So that's what this is. So if you have some spiritual topic you want me to do a deep dive into, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to uh, have a go at what's useful, you know, to people. I know, you know, the basic truths that you're missing, but I don't know how you're, you know, interacting with those truths and, and what may be missing from your perspective, you know, so that you can see God easier. So, you know, that's my job to remove the veils that are between us and God. So, you know, what's on your mind? What's the veil? Hey, I don't understand. You know, what about this topic? So, okay. Thank you uh, for, for bringing this up. Cannabis. So let's go into this. Okay. So a plant, right? And, uh, for like, I have a medical marijuana card in uh, Florida. I've had one in Colorado. I've had one in Arizona. I think I've had one in California. Um, you know, a while ago when I was out west briefly. Now, I think that was 2016, 2015, like that, somewhere in there. But I've had this medical card in Florida now for like eight years, something like that. I don't know, something somewhere around now. I, I can't remember. Six, eight, something like that. But um, in recent times, what's happened in Florida is if you have, so you pay a doctor a fee and they get you this card and that card allows you to go to dispensaries in the state that's medical, which is Florida. Okay. What's happened is <coughs> all these companies have come in to open up uh, these stores to sell cannabis, right? And now it's kind of flooded. And the prices are really low. And they keep having sales and stuff like that. And... It's just really super convenient and super affordable because they label the products properly. You know exactly what you're getting on and on and on. Like it's, it's just become easier and more affordable. Whereas it's not in the beginning, right? Like they start, the government take, you know, starts it and uh, what, what happens is all the uh, money that pours in investment and the, you know, all these businesses want a piece of this of selling this flower from the cannabis plant as so what's happened in Florida now is the price is really low um, which is wonderful they have limits on what you can get so you still have to um, you know go on the black market and get stuff you can't get enough yeah, I can't get enough basically I can only recently with a with a dispensation, pretty much, I think, maybe get enough cannabis to meet my needs. So, that's a little talk about the medical side. Let's, let's just have, to have a talk um, about the spiritual, medical, whatever. Okay, so, the use of this plant, mainly for smoking, vaping, uses uh, cannabis as the flower. So, we're talking about a flower of this plant. Okay. Now... Let's go to Mayor Baba's discussion on, on drugs here. And let's let's take a deep dive into this, okay? Because a lot of people take a shallow dive into this and say, drugs are bad. Now nah, that ain't it at all. That's not it that's not it at all. That's not it. Because if you could you could really look into this and uh, read a lot about this, you know? Because I'll just give you you know, it's it's here. <clears throat> but this guy, uh, this this devotee, um, wanted you know. Here's Pete Townsend. He wanted he wanted to talk about God and a pill. You know, uh, 
Ed and Mir Baba said, you know, God is not in a pill, right? God in a pill? No, God is not in a pill. Um, the opposite, right? So that's not the way to reach God through uh, substances, through substances we find are you know around here that doesn't get you to god is baba's point right those who indulge in lsd in in drugs is harmful and they should stop taking these drugs your duty is to tell them right you know uh you know the idea is to get people to god and if you need a a substance to elevate spiritually that's that's not gonna that's not gonna work you know, that's not how you do it. It's by your actions. And that's not by your, hey, if I smoke enough weed, I get to God now. That's not, if I do enough LSD, I'm going to get to God now. No, that's the opposite. It's not for that, okay? Um, substances that we take, whatever they may be, um, should be taken because, you know, we need them. Like water. You drink water, oh, I need water. I have to drink a certain amount of water a day or I'll die. I have to eat food. Oh my gosh, I, I have this food or I'll die, right? Um, a lot of the substances are uh, not like that, right? Like we don't need alcohol or we're going to die. No, we, that's like, you know, don't, we don't need LSD or, or we're going to die. No, and, and they don't really have any medicinal effects, you know, but... Uh, marijuana is not like that. You see, cannabis isn't like that. It has, it, it, now Baba's point is, hey, you can't take drugs and get to God, right? No, you can't. Uh, but now we're going to get into the spiritual side of this, okay? Um, you could look into it, but Mary Baba said every time the avatar comes here, someone wakes him up, you know? There, there are five perfect masters here that wake him up. <coughs> and... Uh, just like a perfect master, I followed what he said, and, and uh, I woke up. You know, that's what he said to do. And one of those perfect masters that's revered all over uh, all over India. This might be, if you go in, in, into, uh, you know, uh, a restaurant or any business, right? You're, there's a shrine in, like, a small shrine somewhere or, or multiple ones. But there's a main shrine right near the doorway. Uh, of every business in India, period. And the ones I've been into, if I would say, you know, not an incarnation of God, but a saint, you know what I mean? Not like Krishna or Ram or, you know, Buddha. Th those are in many places. But as far as a saint, um, like the most common one where I visited India is Sai Baba of Shirdi, you know, and this is one of Mir Baba's five perfect masters. So, um, this is, let's just say the most revered saint of anywhere I've been in India, <laughs> you know, and I don't mean in an individual individual or an individual area. I just mean, it's the one I see commonly, uh, you know, his, his image everywhere, everywhere I go. That's, it's like, you know, that's the one, if I had to say, well, that's for sure the majority is. And I wouldn't recognize every saying at all, you know? I'm just saying, but I recognize Sai Baba, and it's like, oh, there's Sai Baba, Sai Baba, Sai Baba, Sai Baba. You know, I got a, uh, I got, years ago, I, I, I bought this car that I drive around with, <laughs> that has bad transmission, um, a Suzuki Swift, and, and it, I would have to Tampa to get it, and it was this Indian family, and they were Sai Baba, right then, like, oh, Sai Baba, you know? And I, you know, uh, you know, pay my respects to, to Sai Baba's image, you know, as they do, uh, when I entered the home. And, uh, so, you know, Sai Baba is the most common saint that I, I've been a witness to that they revere in India. So I would say that information on Sai Baba matters, you know, and this is when this information, this is what literally what Mayor Baba wrote, but not that he wrote, right. But, you know, when you talk about writing, you know, like he, he dictated it with his mind or with his hands. And this was written uh, for Mayor Baba. So, what, do we, what did Mayor Baba say about him, right? And this relates to cannabis, so hang with me, please. 
Uh, let's just go right through this. Um, among the sad, sad gurus, by perfect masters, Sai Baba's Darbar, his court, was unique and matchless. Okay. And that's in, uh, you know, this, this publication here. Um, Sai Baba was the king of perfect masters, but I am the master of perfect masters. With Sai Baba was smoking a chillum pipe, here we go, while sitting in Shirdi, this is what Baba said about Sai Baba's Shirdi, right? He was, in fact, controlling the First World War. No one knew this. Similarly, I am here talking with you, but I control the whole universe and everything existing in it while sitting here. So, let's, let's just read, I think, oh. We don't have to go into all of Sai Baba. You could, you could, uh. Oh, this is, this is, has more on it. Okay. Yeah, more. Sai Baba used to say, Allah Malikai, God is master. He would smoke a chillum all the time and spit and cough and then pass around to all who were close to him in his love. He would have a little opium in the pond that he ate, too. Uh, every evening there would be a Kowali program, which is like hymns being sung, uh, during which he was sometimes snooze. Uh, anyway, so point B in here. Uh, well, let's just keep going. G Augusta G had no, this is one of uh, Mayor Pablo's mandalay, is Augusta G. I might be pronouncing these names wrong, so, you know, how would I know? But apologies if I am. Gusta G had no food for days on end as he had no money. He had a shawl. And when he decided to sell it, Sai Baba at once asked him for it. When Sai Baba had passed away, Gusta G joined Upasni Maharaj. That's the Upasni Maharaj is uh, another perfect master of uh, Mir Baba's. Upasni Maharaj was then transferred him to me. And he stayed with me till the end of his life. Talking about Gusta G. He was a disciple that got passed from Perfect Masters on to Mirabala. When Sai Baba used to attend his usual call of nature, Grand Possession with a musical band would accompany him. Considering Sai Baba's peculiar habits, who would say that he was a perfect master? But he was incomparable, and he had the most lustrous and powerful eyes I have ever seen. You understand? When he went to go take a crap, he's like, bring out the band. Come on. He's, that's that's what he did. And uh, so it's not that uh, point B in, and now, you know, go to Chillum. Just little Wikipedia says Chillum is, of course, a pipe for smoking cannabis. So obviously, and that's... Uh, <coughs> Um, when they, when they talk about, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not, it's not coming to me. I'm sorry. Uh, ah, okay. So the point being here, cannabis, <coughs> and I use it. So, let's talk about, you know, I'm a perfect master, and so uh, Sai Baba is Shirdi. And, uh, at least I'm a perfect master, right? At least. Um, at least. So, what do I use cannabis for? Well, for me, I have to, like, digest the whole world is the way I think of it. Like, my digestion isn't good because I literally have to digest the world's into each individual's problems I that's what I do like I'll get a question and so on I'll pray and get the answer give them the answer this is what you do you know that's it and so in order to do that I have to digest that information and the physical body pays a toll the toll being I have to split spit blood all day it takes a lot out of me like I literally already did today, you know, after making that last video. Not that I spit blood all the time, 
but if I don't use cannabis, I do spit blood all the time. That's that's what I do. Like, you know, and this way I don't spit blood all the time. It's just a it's a once in a while thing. It's it's not all the time. But if I'm not smoking cannabis, only time that that, that doesn't happen is if I'm at near Mare Baba's tomb in India. If I'm there then I don't need cannabis and I don't spit blood or anything like that, like that just doesn't happen uh because you know it's kind of like my uh well god watches over me right that's it and that's you know ultimately that is our healing right god can heal at any second anything literally is the creator the story or preserver of everything your prayers are what motivates God for doing anything you know and uh, if you're just trying to work for God and some something is you know ailing you, you it's your job to do something about it so you can work for God you can't you can't be like oh I can't work for God no it don't work like that I just read a story uh, I'm reading this book the spiritual training program uh, it's by Bal Calchari, who who was the one who penned "God Speaks for um, Mir Baba" as Mir Baba dictated it to him. So, you know, he he had a law degree. He was an important Mandalay and so on. Um, but he he in here. Uh, he I mean he talks about the difficulties of. Uh, you know, coming to God and the physical difficulties of it. You can't, you ha, the only way to get to God is to serve God. You see what I'm saying? So if you can't serve God, if you could serve God better, you know, then you should try and do that. For me, I, I mean, if I'm spitting blood all day, I can't help people. You know what I'm saying? I start to lose my energy. I start to wane. I can't eat food. Um... Kid, my thoughts aren't clear, you know. I uh, the body just starts to fade away because what I'm trying to, you know, if this is not infinity here, you see what I'm saying? Everything here is limited. This is the opposite of infinity, this is the opposite of God consciousness. This is a physical realm. This is to have God consciousness in here means it's going to rip apart, you know. Uh, everything in the physical that's a, that's you know because they don't go together you see they don't go together it, only God could have the will to hold them together in here to help you you see but they don't go together you're supposed to you know oh uh, you know hey I won the game God got dropped the body and I come home yay hooray Right? What do you need a body for? What do you need this game for? You won. You came to God. That's the only point of life. There is no other point to life. So you should be focused on that. And and so uh, you can't in any way get to God using any kind of drug or anything like that. It doesn't help. But our goal is to work for God. You know what I'm saying? And when you find out, I mean, people, <laughs> you know, when I give them the information and the truth, they they pretty much to an individual leave in terror at some point, you know what I mean? And like Kelly was saying recently, the dark nun of the soul is a repeating experience, you know? Once you find out the truth, what's going on here, and the difficulty... Uh, uh, you know, against which we find ourselves, if you aren't feeling overwhelmed, you know, and, and like, it's just too much, uh, like, you're not having the proper response, <laughs> you see, you're not, you're not really understanding your situation properly, and so, you know, cannabis has medicinal effects, that's why, you know, they make it illegal. It's because it has some positive effects. If you're using it for, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to see God, I'm going to advance spiritually, it doesn't work like that. 
an aspirin doesn't work like that. You know, it's like, hey, if you take an aspirin, you get rid of a headache. That's all that happens. You smoke cannabis, you might relax some, and I don't have to spit blood, you know, from the tension of this dome tension, you know? Like, that's not a bad thing, but it, you know, if your goal is just, hey, I'm going to relax, I'm not going to do anything spiritual, that, well, has the opposite effect, doesn't it? Um, you know, so substances exist here that can be detrimental and, you know, also Sai Baba has, you know, used opium too, which is another type of relaxant and, uh, you know, uh, he, he would eat with pawn and pawn is for digestion. They eat it there over there for that, you know? And so, in some ways, opiate is okay for digestion in some ways. Uh, you know, cannabis, better, I mean. But, uh, opium has the opposite effect on digestion. That's why I don't use that, you know. That's, that's bad for my digestion, the way it is. Like, I'm just spitting blood all day. It's not good. So, but cannabis does help with that so I can serve God better. Like, it's a malady that cures. I don't take any drugs of any kind. Sometimes I take, like, a Tylenol if I have a wicked headache. Like, it's it's happened before. Um, but it's rare. And, and it's been a while. I don't remember. Um... I, I don't go see doctors. I don't. I don't go see doctors. Uh, let's see. Except for to get a medical card, right, for the cannabis. But other than that, I don't, cause I don't have a doctor. I don't go see doctors. Um, I mostly, uh, I don't eat any meat um, or fish or anything. But sometimes I'll have eggs and some dairy because that's not really you don't kill anything to get them you know uh so no no karma difficulty there but that's also satisfies me, me and you know i have plants and you know rice and potatoes and just i i, I eat a lot of curry stuff too which is good for, for digestion for me I spice everything I eat almost with curry and oil. Um, so, I'm just speaking about, like, how cannabis affects my physical situation in a way that allows me to work for God and do better work for God, you know? Uh, it just helps, like, like, I don't have to get up and be like, oh, you know, <laughs> just spit blood. It sucks to see your blood spit out blood is to see it and realize you know you're wasting away doing this work uh so this helps me so i don't have to do that in this you know i don't know for others but this makes it so the tension of the dome is just not on me so heavily you know and then i can get my clear thoughts with god and without having such a you know be so nauseous like being in the dome for me, once I met God and got thrown back in the body, the, this whole place is, it, it creates such a nausea for me. Like, it makes me so nauseous to be in this body, in here. After meeting with God, it's impossible to describe the, you know, it's like, you know, uh, just, you ever driven through Texas by a, uh, you know, one of them, giant ranches where it just smells like cow shit for you know 20 miles um you know that's what this place is to me um after meeting god so this helps with that problematic adjustment of being in this physical body doing this work it helps with it, it doesn't it doesn't cure it but it really wickedly takes the edge off of it, you know, with me being mindful about my uh, diet and so on. And, you know, trying not to try to do things that, that keep me physically healthy in that way so that I can serve people. That's my goal is to serve God until the last day. I do my best on every day. So this in my situation, 
it helps me for these reasons. As so, you know, I, I want to do a video about cannabis and also speak about my individual experience. Because, you know, when the devil come down here the first time with all those, you know, Judas's, it was like, he smoked cannabis, he smoked cannabis. I did I never said I didn't. And so did Sai Baba. So they're, you know, I'm not trying to get to God. I'm already with God. That's not, I'm trying to do my work for God and be able to get through that, you know? Like, I have noticed a difference when I'm in India. I don't, don't need cannabis when I'm near his tomb. But that's the only time I'm not spitting blood, so. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for that suggestion about cannabis. So if you're using it, you know, to make your work for God more passable, better, and so on. You're the judge of that. You're It's your body that you've been given. You're not going to get another one. You have to judge that and use what makes your body function as best as you can. Who, who's going to judge that better than you? No one. You're, you're the one riding around in this body, not a doctor or nothing like that. I mean, you're going to have to find solutions to, you know, this impure form that we find ourselves in just so we could continue to work for God as best as we can as God's servant. Okay. Any more suggestions about videos? Um, let me know, please. That was a good one. And thank you.